Hey, take it away. Good morning on this fabulous Monday. It's not cold outside here in Texas, which is Woo! great. We, we have got Author today. Talk with me, Sandy Russell, and our guest, Ramon. Everybody say hi. Woohoo! Hi, hi. hi Ramon. <laughs> Yay. It's a Monday morning. That's what that means. Author Talk. Yeah. Oh, so you had something you wanted to talk about first. So what are Yes. You and this is important. Uh, I've had several people ask me this, and that is they've seen the videos um, of Author Talk on YouTube, and they want to know, okay, they keep hearing Sandy say 10 o'clock Mondays, 10 o'clock Mondays. So if they're not Sandy's friend, how do they watch, how do they find uh, Author Talk if they want to watch it live at 10 o'clock on Mondays? How, how do they do that? They can go to my my Facebook page, and that's just look for Sandy Lawrence. And whether you're a friend or not, I have my page public, so you can see anything on my page. You can comment on anything on my page. You do not have to be one of my friends. That's my choice through Facebook. So, Amy, what are you uh, as our social media expert? What do you have to say? Um, if we share it like we usually do, like I shared on all my pages and Sandy's public pages and stuff. If we share it and tag Russell in it, they can just go to your page, Russell, if they're friends with you, and watch it live on there. But What's so it on Russell's page, Russell Stories. So it's at 10 yeah. o'clock. It'll be on my pages too. Yeah, because that's what I do during it. So if I look like I'm not paying attention, I am. I'm just sharing it and tagging everybody that's on here on it. So it's on their pages. I know you're paying attention. You just have a lot of little jobs I while do. we're doing the author talk. And everyone should know Amy has like 15 jobs to do yeah. uh, while author talk's going on. And so if she looks away sometimes, that's what's really going on. Yeah. It's like my job is to post the pictures usually. Yeah. And Amy is not only our social media expert, she is our technical go-to person so she's there making sure we're all live and you can hear us but i want to say a special welcome today to our guest author ramon and ramon i am not going to try to pronounce your last name i want you to tell everyone what your full name is okay my full name is ramon miguel del villar dash gallardo that is very complicated so I just use ramon, okay, ramon thank you villar, <laughs> Is my official name in the United States. And what is your name on your book? <laughs> the, 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 my name in the book is, is uh, Ramon del Villar, but the, the name of my book is Payback. And that's my first book. I'm working on my second novel that's going to be called The Assassin. Very good. Okay, we'll come back to you in just a minute about your books. Um, right now, we wanted to talk about some of the changes going on on Facebook, because that's kind of a hot issue for all of us. And um, Ramon, we reminded Ramon earlier, he needs to be more active on Facebook. And his publisher, Inkling. Who is Fern Brady. You'll is, see that Ramon is appearing with uh, uh, his publisher's Fern Brady on her computer. And it says Fern Brady, but I assure you, Fern that is Ramon, that is not, not Fern. Fern. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, Fern Brady. <laughs> no, it does say Fern Brady, yes. <laughs> so I'm going to shift this to gallery. Do you? I forgot to do that earlier. So now you see all of us the same size on the screen instead of the speaker. So for Facebook, I don't know if you've been listening to the news recently and heard all of the talk about Facebook. I have heard some negative press about Facebook and some people predicting Facebook will be going away because of the way it's structured. Um, I believe Facebook, I believe in Facebook. And I think Facebook is staying up to date as much as possible with the massive changes going on in our world as far as social media. So Amy, what have you heard about the changes on Facebook? Well, I've heard good and bad things. I've heard some people that really like it. They feel like they're finally in control of their newsfeed and they can block out things that they don't want to hear. But from a business standpoint, I have heard that it's not the fact that it's hurting a lot of businesses, but people that primarily get 
their clients and stuff off of social media, they're having to completely scratch what they were doing and create something completely new and be more creative with it. So I've heard, you know, both sides of that. For like me, it was abundantly social. I love it because I always get to try new things and kind of go outside of my bubble. So I feel like Facebook really pushed me outside of it from a business standpoint. But I mean, I can see both sides of it for sure. I think it's more right now heavily geared towards images and videos. And if you're not doing that, you're not going to get seen. That's the results that I've had in the new changes so far. So that's really all I can say about it. Well, and I found, and so me too, I found the same thing. And I did hear some interviews with different people, one with Mark Zuckerberg and then some other people. And one of them was with one of his former mentors who said that the algorithms within Facebook were designed so that if you like something mm -hmm. or someone or you friend something or someone, then you're going to start seeing other people or other pages or other groups other ads that are in the same um, industry, the same people. So you see a lot of the same stuff. So what was happening is Facebook was becoming very segmented with all the people that agreed with and liked each other were in one group and then these people were in another group. And so to interact with that, so um, from a personal standpoint, it's been very good. The changes have been very good. I have heard that it hurt some businesses because of it. But I discovered, because my kids would always say, I posted something on Facebook and I never did see it. So I, in fooling around, found that you can go, if someone is following you, you can make them come up first in your news feed. And you right. can explain how to do that. So Social Media Examiner came out with that article last week, I think, and I watched it. It's like a quick video. You just click on the person and then when you hit follow, it'll say default or set a C first. And if it's someone that you want to constantly kind of stay up to date with, like I do for social media examiner, I just went and changed it to C first. So that way they're predominantly be in your newsfeed and not what you don't want to see. So you're in control of it. That's kind of one of the great features I find is I'm finally in control of what I want from a personal standpoint. Um, Russell, have you seen anything like this? Because you're pretty active on Facebook as far as posting and sharing. And yeah, I'm not. I'm. I, I first thought that the changes were going to be really good, especially from a user standpoint. But I have not liked what I've seen in the last seven days. Uh, and as someone that needs to promote uh, books, and someone you know, like Ramon. And and I we will and I guess you guys too. We want to promote our books. We want to promote our old books. You know, I just don't think I don't think it's functioning right. I think we're going to get some more big changes. Yeah, it's not over yet. I mean, for sure, we're going to have more because I think what my the mindset I guess that I can kind of understand is that he wanted to make users happy and kind of not disclude, but kind of not businesses more users but i feel like because of the whole uproar and everything that's starting he's going to have to kind of tame it back where there's going to be more changes that are going to come for sure now ramon you uh when we were getting on sandy pointed out that you hadn't uh posted about your book on facebook since what 2015 that's correct and i don't know why uh, well i i, I don't uh, let, let me tell you the, the whole truth Nothing but the truth. <laughs> you must be a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, I have no idea how Facebook works. I really just go in when I uh, get uh, a notice from someone, it's the birthday of someone, and I'll go, happy birthday to you, feliz cumpleaños in Spanish, and that's it. But uh, I need to, I need to become more acquainted with uh, Facebook and with the computer in general. And I will try to do that. And of course, I will try to uh, post my, my, my books now, plural, because uh, there's going to be a second one soon. And we're, I'm beginning to work on the third one also. So posting pictures of your book would be yeah. a great thing. So we want to see what your book looks like. Well, and I could show you that. 
and then talk about the um you know how this how and we're gonna russell's gonna talk to you about how you um the story behind your books that's what we always want to hear from every um author that's on is what you know what why did you write this book oh that's a beautiful cover that's a beautiful cover yeah it is a beautiful cover <coughs> yes so and, Ram- go ahead russell okay uh ramon you uh you gave me this book in fact you gave me this book before it, with the old cover that yes. was uh uh, probably it wasn't a very good cover because it was too much like you and I, both of us like that old cover. <laughs> but uh, this is an incredible book, and it's about it, it, it's a, about kind of a investigation, a private eye, and it takes place both in Mexico and the United States, the Houston area, right? Yes, that's correct. And, you know, I really love the part about that was in Mexico because it really described and talked about a world that most Americans aren't familiar with. Would you explain what you were doing in that part of the book? Well, yes, uh, I'm from Mexico and uh, Mexico has a very bad uh, reputation in the Mexico City the capital of the, of the country. And uh, I wanted to describe some of the beautiful things. I am the type of descriptive author, uh, maybe too descriptive sometimes, uh, that like to describe uh, the, the, uh, the things that I, I, I enjoy. So I try to convey the idea of what it is. <clears throat> and by the way, in my second book, The Assassin, which it covers more or less the same uh, characters. It's going to be even more descriptive to some point. I, I like, uh, I was inspired originally by the uh, writing of uh, Jan Fleming, the author of James Bond, and how descriptive he is, because I have always said the books, the novels are much, much, much better than the, than the movies. The movies uh, portray a superhero, uh, the, the only, he only needs a cape to, to be able to fly. And the books convey a human being, a, a very uh, expert, uh, knowledgeable spy, but uh, a human being, and he describes the, uh, the emotions that uh, James Bond feels in such a way. And that's what I wanted to convey in my book, also the emotions and the things that you, you, you live through so that you can kind of feel that you're doing those things that, uh, yourself. And you brought the story to Houston too, didn't you? Yes, yes, yes. Now, what the, tell the readers a little bit about your background so they know where you get your stories. Well, I am, I am uh, Mexican by birth, American by, 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 by choice, and now I am only American. The, the laws in Mexico changed so I could probably claim both nationalities, but I will not claim them. I only claim United States citizenship because I'm very proud of that. It was a gift from God that uh, I, I, I received very humbly. I uh, was an attorney in Mexico, a attorney by profession, but really more of a, of a uh, businessman. And uh, then uh, when I sold the business to an American company, uh, that has since been acquired by a Swiss company. But anyway, the, the, um, I came to the United States and started working as an interpreter. And I very quickly will want, want to tell uh, a little story because I, I had told my wife who was Miss Mexico, Miss Mexico City in 1972, it's very pretty. And to, to be able to, to con- conquer her, I uh, told her, you, know, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, being supported because I can support you as a businessman, as an attorney, as a professor of karate, as a pilot, because I, I was all those things. Uh, but I never told her I can support you as an interpreter. And actually I have supported her as an interpreter and she cannot complain about the support. But anyway, I've been more of an interpreter. I was an interpreter in Brownsville then. That piqued my curiosity about the law in the United States 
and I went to law school. And that's why I'm in Houston, by the way, because I, I lived in, in the valley in Brownsville, but they, they closed the school there. So I had to come and finish here in the University of Houston. And I became an attorney here in 1993. It's unbelievable to, be, to say that I've already been an attorney in May. Uh, it will be for 25 years. Now, uh, what's, why did you, Ramon, why did you wait so long? And I get this too. Why did you wait so long to write your first book? Well, actually, I didn't wait that long. <laughs> I wrote the, uh, the, the novel in 93. Actually, I started writing it before I, I had the license as an, as an attorney. And uh, of course, it was inspired by my own experiences. Uh, I've worked for the court, uh, federal court. Uh, I worked for 25 years here and five years that I worked in, in Brazil, 30 years of experience in the federal court. And I've seen an awful lot of action in the, in the court. And uh, so many uh, stories that are really very, very uh, interesting and intriguing. And I wanted to, to put them in a book and of course, one, one of the things that I want to say is everything that happens in my novel has already ha has happened in, in reality. Of course, I have not been the participant uh, in, in all of those things, but uh, I have seen those things or I've been told by by person who first has first hand knowledge of, of those things. I've got, OK, I want to move on to another subject that we discuss here because this is author talk. So. Uh, I wanted to talk. I wanted to ask you a little bit about what are the promotional plans that you have. You mentioned your new book that's coming out. You've already finished it. It's in the editing phase. It's called Assassin, right? Yes, that's correct. Uh, what's your What is your plans for promoting the book? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> I have no plans, and that is a problem because that's one of the things I need to do. I've always been told that I need to promote my books. And uh, I, I have never done it, really. I mean, it's, it's simply... Uh, Which is a shame, because, Ramon, you write really beautiful books. I oh, loved your first book. Thank you very much. Thank and you, I, you know, and I, I loved hearing you talk, Ramon, about Ian Fleming. and Because uh, most people don't remember Ian Fleming. They remember James Bond. That's right. They That's remember right. the movies. And yeah. when you said Ian Fleming, I'm like, gosh, I haven't heard that name for a long time. Because all I hear is... Um, you know, the different guys who played James Bond and all of that. So I think that's great to remember some of these authors that wrote the books that became movie heroes and movies that we loved and keep playing and watching again and again and again. So so thank you for that, because some of the time, sometimes we do have a tendency to forget the authors. So I would I, if you if your books are anything even remotely um, you know, following James Bond or Ian Fleming's books, you know, I think that's great. I would love to hear more about that and, and your story. So Russell asked you about what you plan to do to promote it. And we know who your publisher is. So Fern, if you want to stick your head around the corner and wave, you oh, do boy. that. <laughs> so um, you have a great story. And we should have, Fern, we need to have his story somewhere. I uh, shouldn't. <laughs> On the website or something. Yeah. That can... I'm sorry? Well, we need to get that out there because, well, well first of all, the, the big secret, which is not really a secret, is that Ramon Del Villar is my dad, right? And so <laughs> we love him. And, you know, uh, his books are amazing. And they are. I love them. They are. She's my daughter. No, no. Well, I know, but I'm not your daughter. I'm more, I'm not I'm not pretty enough to be your daughter. I gotta tell you this, this, You're not the, even his son. Right. And he I, I tried to get you to Ramon, I tried to get you to talk about and I'm going off the subject. I'm sorry, Sandy, for a second. But I tried to get you to talk about the, one of the things I love most about your first book, Payback, was you explained some of the business culture and subculture of Mexico and what is understood that you're supposed to do and not do in the order you're supposed to do it. I just love that stuff. That's like a travel log. The first part of your book is a travel log and I loved it. Well, let me tell you, that is very important because I have uh, had the experience, personal experience 
of people who have told me, you know, I, I, I wanted to do business with so-and-so, an American uh, businessman, and I didn't do it because he wasn't really respectful. He didn't, he didn't <laughs> what, happened, what happens in the mafia, you know? He, he, uh, he didn't respect me, he didn't uh, give me the attention. And it's not that, it's that uh, we Americans are very practical. We want to go to the point, okay? This is, this is the basics of the thing and I'm gonna do it. And in Mexico, you have to elaborate and you have to follow certain rituals, I would call them even, to, to be able to reach a point in which you can negotiate. Be before that, it would be discourteous, it would be in bad taste. And people, some people would say, I'm not gonna do it. So that is that is the reason why. And you put and you communicate that in your book. Yes. Sandy, uh, uh Oh, I think, so one of the things based on what this, this conversation is for anybody, and I know we're author talk, we're talking about authors and books, but businesses need to understand the culture of the people they're doing business with. Absolutely. That's exactly what we teach as far as marketing It's understanding the culture or the likes and dislikes or the preferen preferential treatment that readers want. So you need to know who your readers are. And if your readers are coming from Mexico, do you, do you have the books in Spanish and English or just English? It's just in English. And I have been asked by some friends from Mexico uh, who feel more comfortable in, in Spanish, to translate it to Spanish. And I have just not had time to do it, but I, I'm gonna do it one of these days. That is a great thing to do. I think that would be great to do that. So. <laughs> is, whose chihuahuas is that? Not mine. There's not so mine. many chihuahuas. <laughs> oh, that's that's hey, Ramon. Is that your chihuahua at your office? No, it's it, <laughs> it's my two my two grand dogs. I have two grand dogs. They, they, oh, they are the children of my children. So uh, I can see them. Sa Sandy, do we have any do we have any uh, questions posted on the video? I am looking, and thank you, Fern, for posting um, that Verstant, the president of Houston Writers Guild, is the one that did the cover images for uh, for um, Ramon's books. So no, no, um, <laughs> no questions. But Brenda Trot, thank you, said Fiesta to do biz. Okay, I got. Not sure, Brenda, what you meant by that. Mylene Grimm is on and said hi. So we have people on um, watching, saying hello, but no specific questions for Ramon. So we're gonna be on for a couple more minutes, few more minutes. So if you do have a question, you're watching and you wanna ask him something about his books or about anything, just uh, about his story. So just feel free to post them on Facebook and we're watching. And if you see something before I do, interrupt us and, and let us know. Russell, did you have any other questions for Ramon? I, I have a hundred more questions. It's Ramon, you, but we don't have time for that. Ramon, when you figure out what your plan is for the publicity for your next book, The Assassin, will you come back on and tell us? I will be very honored and glad to do it, yes. And, and I'm going to rely a little bit on you to help me out with the promotion because you you know how to promote your books. And, and by the way, I've already, and I'm not returning the compliment. I really enjoyed your first book. And unfortunately, you haven't published another one. Well, I'm almost there. I'm almost <laughs> finished the first draft. Almost. Did you see I was in the paper yesterday, Sandy? Yes, I did. Did you see I shared your post? Yes, I did. And <laughs> thank you, Valerie Sweeten, that was on has been on a previous podcast. Uh, I have, before we go, uh, Amy needs to explain something. What's this that I just, that you just told me that you can program your Instagram to follow other people that use the same hashtags you do? How, what is that? Right. So you can follow people based on hashtags. So I use mo uh, Monday Motivation. So I can just go and do a search for Monday Motivation and whoever else is using that hashtag, I have the option to follow them. So it's a different way of networking. If you're Oh, that's how you do it. But you can also just follow that <clears throat> hashtag, right? Yeah, you can just follow that hashtag. So whoever posts that how hashtag. Do you, what button do you push for that? 
you, if you if you go into the search and put the hashtag you want to follow, like Monday Motivation, it brings right. it and you can follow it. Yeah, you I'm, can follow. I'm going to do that this morning. I can tell you that based on our conversation earlier about Facebook and all that's going on there, there are people moving to Instagram by the hundreds. How about Facebook you, Ramona? Are you moving to Instagram? <laughs> heard of Instagram to begin with, but I will, <laughs> I will ask Pern and, and join Okay, so we're, Pern, we need to educate uh, Ramon on yes. um, social media and Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Pern okay. needs to take better care of her daddy. <laughs> <laughs> and that gives me a chance to tell you that Amy, who will, will be ending here in just a couple of minutes, but Amy has a social media company called Abundantly Social. And she yeah. does help people with their social media. So if you need help, if anyone out there needs help with the social media, author or not author, Amy does a great job and she's fast. That's that's what, and of all the things I love about Amy is she can do it in a minute where it takes me like yeah. hours. So she's great at that. Um, so anything coming up this week we want to talk about, Russell, real quick before we say goodbye to Ramon and everybody else? No, except I'm real excited about Ramon's next book because he promised it would have some of that same uh, Mexico and Mexico City descriptions and discussion of their rules and unspoken rules. So I can't wait to read it. And, and Ramon, I think you should talk to your publisher. Now, you need to be doing some speaking around this whole thing about culture and books and authors and all the stuff you've been okay. talking about. You have a great story and you have a great message for people. So we're going to look to see your name in lights coming up soon. Thank you very, very much for that. And I will. And I promise I will contact Amy because I, I need some... Uh, uh, advising and counseling with respect to my my social media life. <laughs> That's great. So thank you all for joining us. This has been another author talk, and we will be posting this video to YouTube later today. Like and comment. Like and comment. Thank you, Russell. So also subscribe to it. Yes. So we want to get more subscriptions. We want to get more likes and more comments because the more you do that, the higher we go in the Google ranking on YouTube. So um, thank you all again. We'll be back next week, Monday. Um, that will be January the 29th. And we will see you then. Have a great week. Bye.